Hello, I'm Dr. Sharam Sharif. I'm a naturopathic physician in uh, Kent, Washington. I've been in practice in Kent for uh, about 15 years. Uh, my main area of uh, focus, specialty, is homeopathy. Uh, I happen to have been an adjunct faculty at Bastyr University, the local naturopathic uh, medical school, uh, for a number of years now. And I teach homeopathy uh, uh, on the side uh, whenever I get a chance. Uh, I have written a book on homeopathy. I've published lots of articles and blogs on the subject. I've given a talk, uh, talks at our national convention uh, on several occasions. Uh, my last talk at our national convention, the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians Convention, uh, was in uh, August of 2019, last August. The title of the talk was Homeopathic Prevention and Treatment of Epidemics and Pandemics. Uh, you can view this the video, audio video of this presentation on, on my website. It is uh, on the homepage of drsharif.com. That's drsharif.com. You can also uh, look at the PowerPoint presentation that goes along with this presentation. The PowerPoint presentation. Uh, file uh, is on the website. Uh, the reason I'm uh, preparing this video um, tonight is just to cover uh, just some basics uh, on the as far as the history of homeopathy is concerned. Um, homeopathy uh, comes from Europe. Uh, the doctor that originally came up with homeopathy, his name was Dr. Samuel Christian Hahnemann. He was a German medical doctor. And he has written uh, some amazing books, um, and one of his uh, grand masterpieces is called Organon of Medicine. Right here, Organon of Medicine, notice it doesn't say Organon of Homeopathic Medicine, it says Organon of Medicine. This is uh, one of the most valuable pieces of literature in the world of medicine. Uh, Dr. Hahnemann was, uh, is considered to be uh, uh, an absolute genius, and he is left behind... Uh, some uh, remarkable books and that's uh, one of the main books in our field um, one of the one of his main students was dr. James Taylor Kent medical doctor again and this is his book called lectures on homeopathic philosophy right there um, and dr. Kent uh, is the considered to be the father of homeopathy in the United States uh, he has left behind some amazing uh, pieces of literature as well. Uh, this book right here is called Lectures on Homeopathic Materia Medica. Right here, Dr. James Kent, medical doctor. Um, as you're going to uh, find out through this video, most of the pioneers, well, that's, a, that's actually, let me rephrase that. All the pioneers in the field of homeopathy were medical doctors. Uh, it was... Uh, invented by medical doctors and, and like literally um, all the doctors who have left any books behind uh, until like the last few decades were all exclusively medical doctors so so far we had we have Dr. Hahnemann and now here we have Dr. Kent now Kent Dr. Kent um, has left lots of books behind this is a thick book right here this is called Kent's Repertory uh, so notice that we have two books by Kent. One is his repertory, the other one is, is his Materia Medica. So uh, homeopaths, famous homeopaths throughout the world, uh, they have left these uh, two um, types of, two, uh, you could say, uh, uh, Bibles behind. One is uh, called, again, a Materia Medica, one is called a repertory. Now, even modern homeopaths, uh, like we have Dr. Robin Murphy, uh, uh, who is an American homeopath, naturopath, uh, and homeopath, and he has a set of these books. He's got a repertory and a materia medica, right here. And as you can see, they're quite thick. So this is more of a modern uh, version of what Dr. Kent, Kent has left behind. Uh, and I probably use these two books in my practice uh, every single day. Uh, uh, basically, no matter who I'm treating and what I'm treating. So, uh, going back to history, so we have Dr. Hahnemann, uh, and we have Dr. Kent, and, and we've had literally hundreds and hundreds of medical doctors throughout the world over the last 200 years who have left fantastic, remarkable books behind. And uh, just, again, over the last few decades, we've had more naturopaths. Uh, basically, naturopathic medicine is new. 
as uh, some of you might know. Um, and uh, so we are contributing to the field as well, uh, but uh, all the ancient books are written by medical doctors. So here is another book. Uh, uh, these are some of the pioneers because we're talking history. Uh, Boningha Boninghausen, he has a book called The Therapeutic Pocketbook, um, right here. And this particular book was edited by Dr. Allen. Uh, both of them were medical doctors. So um, this is, we have another book here. It's called Allen's Keynotes. Uh, and Dr. Allen, again, was a medical doctor. Um, we have uh, Material Medical here by Farrington, uh, who is another huge figure in our field. Uh, and this is called Clinical Material Medica, Dr. Farrington. MD, medical doctor. Uh, we have a guru uh, that is well known in our field. His name is Dr. Nash, and uh, he was a medical doctor. And this book is called Leaders in Homeopathic Therapeutics with Grouping and Classification, right here. And I'm not a professional videographer, so you got to forgive my videoing here. Uh, we have... Um, just, just uh, this this book caught my attention. It's called Epidemic. Uh, obviously, I'm just I'm doing this video because we're trying to uh, raise awareness about homeopathy so we can better handle this uh, pandemic that's unfortunately going through the planet. Um, and so, uh, I know you you guys are all concerned about um, the pandemic and looking for alternatives, looking for solutions. Uh, and quite honestly, uh, this is a time when we need to be referring to homeopath to address the uh, uh, crisis at hand. Homeopathic medicine, uh, for 200 years now, we have uh, an enormous body of evidence that homeopathy is highly effective uh, when it comes to treating epidemics and pandemics. You can refer to my talk, the one I gave at the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians, uh, to learn more about some of these, uh, 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 some of the data, some of these diseases historically, and how homeopaths uh, fared compared to their uh, non-homeopathic colleagues. Uh, this is a book that um, might uh, be in, of interest to you. It's called The Logic of Figures by Dr. Thomas Lindsley Bradford, medical doctor. Right here. So Dr. Bradford, medical doctor, he, he literally has, um, he left through, he's looked at all the evidence uh, prior to uh, when he wrote this book, of course, uh, comparing and contrasting um, how homeopath did with their uh, with their you know with the with their colleagues who didn't do homeopathy, uh, and he's got all these charts here in this book, and like page after page of charts, chart after chart, comparing, uh, you know, the results that homeopaths were getting versus medical doctors. We have charts like this, like this, and this is all based on government documents and uh, uh, historical uh, books written by doctors uh, throughout the planet. So, uh, I mean, we have detailed charts, um, charts like that. And one thing is for sure, when you look at this book and other books like it, is homeopath, uh, when it comes to epidemics, they have an extraordinary level of success. Uh, and that's why we, we have books written left behind, such as this one by Charles Nadehard, medical doctor. Uh, and it's called On the Efficacy of Crotalus Horridus in Yellow Fever, right here. Um, notice this book is called Scholar Select. These are very, uh, they're in limited print. Uh, Dr. Nehart, uh, I'm not sure if I'm saying his name right. He was a medical doctor, as you can see right here. And so they were treating yellow fever with this remedy called Crotalis, which coincidentally, Crotalis is a remedy that's prepared from um, a poisonous snake called Crotalis. Uh, so you, uh, there's something, <laughs> this might be disturbing to some of you, but homeo some homeopathic remedies, a number of homeopathic remedies are made from poisons in nature, such as snake venom. So the remedy Crotalis uh, that I just shared with you that they use for the treatment of yellow fever does come from the snake venom called, the, 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 the venom of a snake called Crotalis. So that uh, so that's just happens to be a remedy that sounds scary. Uh, but you should know, uh, if you happen to not be familiar with this, that homeopathic remedies are um, diluted 
uh, hundreds of thousands of times. So when we say crotalus, homeopathic crotalus, obviously we're not giving st snake venom to patients. Um, uh, I guess for those of you who are unfamiliar with naturopathic physicians, um, we are primary care licensed uh, physicians uh, by the state. So um, I don't think a licensed physician would jeopardize their license and give uh, snake venom to someone. So obviously these remedies are not uh, poisonous and uh, they just sound, some of them sound scary uh, and people that uh, out of ignorance sometimes uh, they put homeopathy down, they might say oh this is they give snake venom to patients. Um, and we do have remedies that are derived from poisonous sources, uh, even arsenic and mercury and uh, you name it, Nox vomica and belladonna and crotalis and lachesis. Uh, yes, there are l many of our homeopathic remedies are poisonous and many of them are not. And we have non-poisonous ones derived from nature like sulfur and phosphorus and calcium carb and lycopodium, etc. So um, uh, because the remedies are highly diluted, you're not really not getting any of the original substance. You're getting the, what we call the energetic imprint of the remedy. And that's really one of the main reasons homeopathy is not mainstream because it just doesn't make sense uh, that something that's so highly diluted it could have any effect on a person. But obviously, as you can see from these books I'm showing you, if this didn't work, we wouldn't have all these, all these amazing doctors, 99% of them being medical doctors throughout the last 200 years, uh, leave these remarkable books behind. So, going back to what I was talking about, we have this other book on, on ty 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 typhoid fever and its homeopathic treatment by Dr. Augustus Rapu, um, uh, and Coat, I believe his last name is Coat, actually. Well, no, Rapu was the doctor, I'm sorry, it was translated by Dr. Coat, who was a medical doctor. This is the title of the book. And so there is a uh, typhoid. So we covered. Um, so I'm gonna make sure I don't. I cover all the books here that we have here. Uh, these are just some of the books I have in my collection. We have several books here on cholera uh, and its prevention, its prevention and its treatment uh, homeopathically. So we have. I'm just trying to think. Uh, yeah, this doctor, Dr. Ghosh, Sarat Ghosh, was a medical doctor from India. So this is the book right here. And um, coincidentally, uh, many of the books I own here uh, in my private private library, I have ordered through India. Um, they, and you could say India is the capital of homeopathy in the world. Uh, it's been used extensively by Indians for God knows how long. Uh, they have probably 200 or up to maybe potentially 300,000 uh, homeopathic pra practitioners in the country. So I would consider India the capital of homeopathy. And just so you know, the United States was the capital of homeopathy about 80, 90, 100 years ago, um, right around the time when the pandemic flu hit, uh, hit the United States. And I'll talk about that in a minute. So this book here, uh, Cholera, again, was written by Indian homeopaths, amazing remedies here for cholera. What a shame, people are dying of cholera in various countries in the world as we speak. Uh, and uh, they, if they just had the knowledge of this and the remedies, um, we would be saving millions of lives right now. So here's another book on cholera by Dr. Salzer, uh, who is also another medical doctor right here. Sorry, there's a glare here. I'm, uh, I realize that, but I'm not sure how to fix it. There we go. Um, Dr. Salzer, right there, medical doctor. So there's two books on cholera. Um, there's a book on diarrhea by Dr. James Bell. Uh, it's called The Homeopathic Therapeutics of Diarrhea, uh, right there. And the author is Dr. Bell, who is also a medical doctor. Uh, so this is a book called A Synoptic Key of the Material Medical by Dr. Bozier, right here. Dr. Bozier was a medical doctor. Uh, here's a book uh, by J Dr. Dorothy Shepard, who is uh, well-loved in our community, and she was a very famous medical doctor who ran a hospital, I believe. And she's got lots of books. This happens to be one of her books, The Magic of the Minimum Dose, and she's got one called the More, More Magic of the Minimum Dose. So that's two different books. Uh, she's, got, she's got left behind several books. So this is a book on the therapeutic uh, uh, therapeutics of tuberculosis by Dr. Burt, medical doctor. And no, just so you know, tuberculosis, I believe, is one of the top two uh, epidemics 
in the world. It's not a, a volatile epidemic, but it is uh, it, it, you, it is a pandemic. It's, it's, uh, the numbers are going up, and we're getting, we're having more and more antibiotic resistant tuberculosis, which is um, kind of scary. And uh, this book might be the solution for future for the tuberculosis pandemic. Uh, this book is called The Family Guide to Homeopathy, and the author, again, is a medical doctor. This is kind of a pocket book for uh, non-professionals. This is a book called The Essentials of Homeopathic Therapeutics, right here, um, by Dr. Jacques Juani, and he's a medical doctor right there. Fantastic book. I, I believe he, he is French. This is a book called Human Condition Critical, uh, right here, uh, by Dr. Luc de Schepper, uh, one of my favorite authors. He's, he's got every degree under the sun, except he's not a naturopath. So he's, uh, you can see his credentials right there. Uh, uh, brilliant, brilliant doctor. Uh, here's another book uh, on cancer and homeopathy written by Dr. Jean Lionel Baguette, or Bagat. I'm sorry, I'm not pronouncing these names right, I'm sure. And here's the book, and he is a French medical doctor again, and you can see right there. So, um, uh, this is a book on children's remedies by Dr. Uh, Farouk Master. Um, he is a, an Indian medical doctor, uh, extremely well known in India, and he is alive. So, uh, uh, let's see, thank God we have these beautiful, wonderful homeopaths throughout the world that are actually living among us, and they have amazing ideas for COVID-19. And again, I've tried to follow uh, as many of these uh, international homeopaths as I, uh, as I uh, can over the last couple of months and have summarized uh, their teaching in the blogs that are uh, on my website. Here's another book uh, called Homeopathy for Diseases. It's written by uh, Harry van der Zee, the Dr. Harry van der Zee, who is a medical doctor. Um, Co coincidentally, uh, you should know that uh, homeopathic uh, practitioners know more about fever than any other doctor in the world, uh, with potentially potentially the exception of Chinese and Ayurvedic uh, practitioner. I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, I don't. I'm not familiar with uh, Asian medicine and Indian medicine. However, I can't imagine getting more detailed uh, about fever than what I'm about ready to share with you. Like this book right here is called Intermittent Fever with the Repertory of Boninghausen. The author is P. P. Wells, medical doctor, right there. See that? Okay, so just to give an idea how in-depth homeopaths get when it comes to these uh, uh, epidemics and ac acute illnesses, this is a section, like they have extensive knowledge of chills, fever, perspiration, sweating, basically. Uh, so like here is a section just uh, on chills. Look at that. Uh, they don't just say, they don't just suffice by asking the patient, do you have chills? They ask them, do you have chills? And then you get hot, or is it sensation of heat? Uh, is it, where is the sensation, is it chills followed by heat, where, is it on the face, on the hand, on the wrist, where is it, is thirst involved or not, are you thirsty, are you not thirsty, if you're thirsty, are you thirsty for cold water or hot water, do you have chills followed by heat and then sweat, or, or is it heat followed by chills and then sweat, what, in what order are these three going, so as you can see there's pages and pages of detailed information on, on chills and heat, uh, Right there. So, um, and for under, let's say, let's take for example one symptom um, uh, of, uh, let's say right here, partial sensation of coldness in the hand. What are some remedies for that? They actually literally list the top remedies that if you have, you know, a specific symptom like that. So in homeopathy, the symptoms are selected based on the specific set of signs and symptoms that the patient is presenting with, not the name of their condition. So we don't have remedies for COVID-19 per se. We have remedies for patients with the specific set of signs and symptoms that are presented to us. So I can't say all COVID-19 patients can benefit from remedy X. This doesn't, homeopathy doesn't work like that. You have to take the case. So that's why Patients uh, out there need to consult with homeopaths so that we can find the exact remedy that matches their uh, specific signs and signs and symptoms. So here is a book called Homeopathy in Intensive Care and Emergency Medicine. Phenomenal book written by homeopaths. I don't think the authors were medical doctors. Um, so uh, we have had books. Now, I know everybody's scared of pneumonia right now because COVID-19, that's how it gets people. So here's like three books, historical books again, on uh, pneumonia and other respiratory illnesses. Like this one is called Leaders in Respiratory Organs, 
doc written by Dr. Nash again, our favorite doctor right there, uh, who was a medical doctor, right? So we have that. We have this book on pneumonias. It's called Borland's Pneumonias. Cute little book from India. I don't think the author of this one is a medical doctor. This one is called Homeopathic Leaders in Pneumonia, right there. It's a tiny little book again from India. And uh, the doctors are Dr. A and Dr. D.T. Palford, right there, both of whom were medical doctors. Um, let's see, what else can I share with you? Uh, we have books written on the subject of epidemics um, that literally are, the title tells it all right here, uh, Home Homeopathy and Epidemic Diseases. This is another book written by Dr. Dorothy Shepard. I spoke about her earlier. She's a, she was a medical doctor uh, who lived, I don't remember, in the 1930s or 40s, I can't recall, but uh, she was uh, an internationally known homeopath. Uh, and this is another book written uh, on homeopathic, uh, uh, homeopathy for epidemics. The author of this book is a homeopath. She's not a doctor. She's a homeopath, uh, I believe. That's my understanding. She, I hope, actually, you know what? She's a doctor of homeopathy, I believe. I take that back. I'm sorry. Uh, she's from the UK. Uh, and she's left, uh, she's uh, written an amazing book here um, uh, on various epidemics, including Ebola. So... I believe I shared this book with you uh, on crotalis and yellow fever. Um, I think I covered all that. Let's see. There is uh, there are modern homeopaths uh, that are uh, living among us right now that are writing books on op epidemics and homeopathy. And uh, one of my main teachers of homeopathy is Dr. Robin Murphy, uh, and he has actually a school of homeopathy. Uh, he teaches classes online. You can take classes online by. Uh, and never meet him. <laughs> uh, so I've been following Dr. Murphy for years, listened to all his CDs and DVDs, and uh, and of course I use these two gems that he has written every day in my practice, the, his repertory and Materia Medica. Uh, these are, um, I mean, if you have these books, you're set, because the repertory is a book of uh, uh, signs and symptoms, so you can pretty much so find every symptom that any patient could complain of in this book. They're called the repertory. And the Materia Medica is a book of remedies. That's why it's called Materia Medica. It has a list of all the homeopathic remedies in the world and their medicinal uses in depth. Uh, and for each remedy, it literally tells you uh, what part of the body uh, could it affect and what are, what are, what are, what are, what are uh, all the properties, uh, like what uh, the symptoms that uh, this remedy could address. Uh, so uh, these, are, these are precious books. And in case you wonder how did they come up with this information, uh, the repertory of the Materia Medica uh, is not the work of one or two uh, human beings. Uh, it is a compilation of knowledge that we have gathered over the last 200 years. And so our Materia Medicas, are, these are valuable uh, uh, books that actually tell you what would happen to a person if they were exposed to too much of whatever substance that is listed in the book. Uh, so it's not guesswork, Is meticulous uh, keeping track of what would happen to people if they consume too much of whatever substance um, even snake venoms or whatever it may be uh, so if a person let's say is bit by a snake venom if you know the name of the snake let's say if it happens to be crotalis you can go to the materia medica look under crotalis and you can predict what would happen to that person who was uh, basically uh, bitten by uh, the snake called crotalis or lachesis, or nausea, whatever the snake might be, or uh, the, cr the critter, or a substance, poison, whatever it may be. Uh, I have so many examples, honestly, I don't know where to begin. So, uh, let's see, we have other books that I could share with you. Uh, let me see, there's this other book here written by a PhD, uh, Dr. Sandra Perko. It's called The Treatment, uh, Homeopathic Treatment of Influenza, um, Surviving Influenza, Epidemics and Pandemics, uh, Past, Present, and Future with Homeopathy. This is the, probably the best book on homeopathic treatment, treatment of influenza. So, um, according to her, by the way, uh, she has a section in her book uh, that talks about how medical doctors in the United States did in the during the Great Influenza of 1918, the pandemic flu, the Spanish flu of 1918. Um, you know, as look at the title of this book. Influenza, the 100-year hunt to cure the deadliest disease in history. Okay, now, it's really too bad that uh, this author uh, is not aware of uh, the fact that homeopaths actually had knew the solution back then, 100 years ago, 
that I don't know what I don't understand why there is a hunt for a treatment for the flu because we knew the remedies for the flu a hundred years ago. Um, Twenty percent of the medical doctors in the U.S. that uh, practiced during the 1918 flu, they were uh, 20% of the medical doctors who practiced, they were homeopaths. And according to Dr. Um, Perko, uh, she's gathered some amazing uh, data here. Uh, these homeopaths, American homeopaths that lived during the pandemic, their success, their, their mortality rate among their patients was about 1%, 1 or 2%. Whereas their colleagues, which uh, the other 80% of medical doctors who didn't practice homeopathy, they had a 50% mortality rate. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can look at a page right here. This is like a sample from the page. You can just look at it. One paragraph after another, she lists the names of these doctors, all medical doctors practicing out of different cities in the United States, and the remedies they prescribed for the pandemic flu and the results they got. Um, and this goes on and on and on. Uh, right here. Okay. Uh, so I live in Kent, which is very s close to Seattle, right? Uh, and I can tell you that there was, uh, this caught my attention, there was a doctor from Seattle. Um, I wrote about it in my blog the other day. Um, right here. Uh, Dr. C.P. Bryant, medical doctor, right here in the middle of the page, Seattle, Washington. So he says, I treated over 100 cases of influenza and pneumonia, lost two cases, one who had taken aspirin for a week when pneumonia developed before I was called, the other a very malignant case with very high temperature from the onset. The remedies uh, were gelsemium, eupatorium, bryonia, etc. So, that's, and then there's another doctor from Seattle, Washington, Dr. Palmer, A.B. Palmer. Notice they were both medical doctors. Uh, and he said, I treated approximately 500 cases, which included much pneumonia, lost two cases, never used aspirin, nor permitted it to be used. Chief drugs used were belladonna, these are homeopathic, obviously, belladonna, gelsemium, sticta for the, for the throat symptoms, Mercurius, Natmir, and Kalimer, uh, yeah, and Kalimer, period. So that's two doctors uh, from Seattle with amazing results. And you know, these are all, again, the entire list of the doctors um, here, 100% medical doctors. We did not have homeopaths. We did not have naturopathic doctors back then. And we might have had homeopaths, but really, I think they were all medical doctors to my knowledge. Every single one of these books is written by medical doctors. So, so again, I don't understand why uh, the author of this book, and you know, with all due respect for the author, Dr. Jeremy Brown, uh, he refers to this thing as a hunt for a cure where we already know remedies that are highly effective for the flu. Uh, again, uh, I say that, but in the same breath, I'm going to say homeopathy doesn't treat, we don't treat illnesses. We, have, we treat people, we treat individuals with a specific set of signs and symptoms. So um, no two flu patients are going to get need necessarily the same remedy. Uh, if, you, know, we, you have to individualize the case. So you could have a, uh, like say some, one person with the flu, they may be craving cold water, uh, they may be having chills and fever and uh, be extremely achy and might need the remedy X. Another person may not be as achy and may be not craving water at all, may be thirstless and might need a totally different remedy. And they both would, could be diagnosed with influenza, you know, type A or type B. Uh, or, or they may not even have influenza. They might have an influenza-like illness. The, the exact diagnosis doesn't really matter nearly as much to a homeopath as the signs and symptoms that they display. So we treat signs and symptoms. So we don't really, we can never say that we have a treatment for influenza. We would, no homeopath would ever say that. We have remedies for patients with influenza and their remedies would differ from one patient to another. And no homeopath is ever going to say that we can cure influenza, we can cure COVID-19. That is not, that's not intelligent, it's not educated, it's not true. For one thing, no treatment is 100% effective, um, and we don't have treatments again for diseases. That's really important to emphasize, and I'm not just trying to be politically correct, that's the truth of the matter. So uh, uh, there are a lot of people that email me, they're like, do you have a treatment for COVID-19? Uh, we do have remedies that appear to be effective, highly effective. 
but there is, I can't say there's this one remedy or two. The list is long. At this point, there are like 20, 25 remedies that homeopathic practitioners throughout the world uh, are, are, have come up with. Uh, and um, they uh, are recommending these remedies based on the patient's specific signs and symptoms. So again, we can't say, take this remedy or that, that remedy. In my last blog, I mentioned the top remedies that are uh, being recommended uh, by our gurus and some uh, preventative ideas. So you're welcome to refer to my blogs. If you like the blog, please distribute the blog to people you know. We need to uh, let people know that there is hope for this pandemic. Uh, we need to utilize, uh, um, you know, ho homeopaths. The society needs to use us at this point. We're more than happy to uh, join our conventional brothers and sisters in hospitals, in clinics throughout the world, and help with this pandemic. This is a time when we need to all come together and help humanity. Uh, we need to take down the walls that separate conventional medicine from alternative medical uh, uh, systems of medicine. We're all basically working to help humanity, so we need to, uh, if you're a doctor or a healthcare practitioner watching, watching this, this from the conventional side, uh, we need to come together and work together. Uh, there is no competition. Uh, I would never want to compete in uh, the, when it comes to Western medicine uh, with a, a, um, a, a con regular conventional um, allopathic medical doctor. Uh, obviously, we don't have the same training. There is no competition. Uh, we don't have enough training to do uh, traumas and surgeries and lots of other things that medical doctors are able to do. Uh, but we are... Uh, I believe homeo homeopaths are equipped to uh, tackle epidemics and pandemics really with, I believe, with more efficacy, ease, uh, than any other branch of uh, medicine um, that I'm aware of on the planet. Um, I was listening to a medical doctor from Hong Kong who, uh, I believe he was, he was a professor, it said. I'm not, maybe he wasn't a medical doctor, but he was a professor of some kind. Uh, he, uh, he, he, was, he happened to be homeopath, and he was talking about the results they were getting in Hong Kong and how uh, a lot of the patients he had seen that had he had tried TCM, the traditional Chinese medicine, and they were not getting results uh, um, that were extremely satisfying. Uh, so, and then as soon as they saw him and uh, tried homeopathic remedies, they uh, their condition improved uh, rather rapidly. These are just a few other books that just I happened to notice laying around here on uh, skin diseases. Uh, written every single one of them is written by medical doctors. This is one right here. This is another one. Um, these are professors of dermatology who happen to specialize in um, homeopathy. They are all medical doctors uh, from throughout the world, different countries. Uh, I just happened to see a couple other books written here, sitting here. Uh, homeopathic psychology. The, doc the author is Dr. Bailey, who is a medical doctor psychiatrist. So, as you can see, uh, there are there's another book on mental health care and homeopathy. The authors are all medical doctors. As you can see, medical doctors are, they have pioneered our field. They, uh, for 200 years, they have uh, written thousands and thousands of volumes of books on homeopathy. And uh, we have a rich body of evidence that homeopathy works during acute and chronic conditions. But where it really shines uh, is during epidemics and pandemics. Thank you so much for watching. God bless.